It's hard to believe where we are standing right now that this is actually in England, this house. It's got a lovely sense of um, exposure to different kind of sensibilities. It looks a bit Scandinavian. Uh, the kitchen does not work. And the reason is, is that people's attitudes to kitchens have changed even in this short period of 10 years. Basically, Richard's kitchen is tiny. You haven't got space. You've got a little bit of a view, but you haven't got a wonderful view because you've got a wall right in front of you apart from anything else. Functional issues. I mean, this, to me. Yeah, well, I love this table, John. Uh, you do. <laughs> this stays. No, you're having me on here. You, you, no, I hate it. I know it sounds awful, but the first thing you could do is just remove this and you find the kitchen would work much, much more efficiently. Right. But then there are all the other things because by the time you've got to work somewhere like this, it's so far away from that, it's so far away from that, that really, it must be driving you mad. Yeah, is if there's more than two people in this kitchen at any one yeah. time talking. Yeah. It is crowded. Yeah, there's nowhere where you really belong either. It's a thoroughfare, which is another issue. Yeah. Okay, Richard, now we can have some fun. We've got a point somewhere in the middle here where you're, you're going to be able to see across here yeah. um, and in, into the, obviously into the garden. Okay. I mean, it's going to be all about eye contact initially. Yeah. Our initial conversation should be how we can um, enjoy being in the space and without being able to talk to somebody directly, look them in the eyes, then you can't really have a proper social conversation. Right. This is the sort of spot somewhere around here that I'm shading in where it'd be quite nice to stand. The way we're living at home is changing. The kitchen is now becoming a social space. A lot of people may not realise it but they actually that's how they want to live. They're spending much less time together. There's pressure in the evenings from all sorts of different things like leisure. So when they when they are together in the evenings they want to be in the same space. In fact the whole European model of a house as a series of heat boxes seems to me to be over. A new project, obviously. Good too. So, um, right, here's what little bit of stuff I started with him. And I think I'd just like you to look at this and just... It's quite a colourful space, isn't it? I mean, the, it's, you it walk is, in, it's yeah. li he's literally got this painted. It's bright red, I think, if I remember rightly. But the kitchen is just a pokey, transient space of how this works. There's a deck all around the house. It's, it actually almost is slightly Australian, isn't it? This is a most unusual restoration project. This barn was unoccupied by any kind of activity, agricultural activity, for about 30 years before the clients bought it. Oh, Come on, how much does it weigh? <laughs> <laughs> it must weigh a quarter of a ton. People emerging from this. <laughs> is this a whole workshop? Yes. It takes seven people to lift this. Seven people, so yeah. and that's without the, the base. clients are getting value for money, perhaps? Acid. This is the moment of truth. This is the acid. You know, is this going to work? Is this going to fit? It's going to fit. Oh, yeah. There we are. Okay, this is another acid test, another moment. Truth. Yeah, no, perfect. It just drops on perfectly. What do you think now that it's all it's beginning to kind of... unbelievable. It's just better than I ever expected. Oh. It's just fabulous. Look at it. It's all just coming together. There's quite a lot to see and feel and take in, isn't there? there is, you, you do really do want to touch it, especially this yeah. unit here. You just have yeah, to touch. This, the curve of the, wo the wood yeah, on here is just... It's gorgeous. In terms of the pieces, what, what piece do you find... Um, well, which piece is the most surprising to you in terms of its size or shape or...? It has to be this piece here. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I just love the way it moves, I love the way the cupboards work, I love the curve on the back. This is um, a surprise. Surprise. <laughs> it's two it's sets actually, of fridge freezers. Um, it's, it's, it's a pair of fridge freezers. We moved our sort of social drinking area round, further round. That's right, because we felt it was a bit too tight, didn't we? We thought it was too column. tight, but again, that was a cost. Mm idea to oh, take that it? off and actually oh. I think it looks rather splendid the way it is. Mm. What I also quite like about this, and, I, and this is, I'm always intrigued when you first come and see something you've worked on because it, you never get exactly what you think you're going to get. And actually I'm very grateful this is tall because yes. I think you'll find that when you're standing here actually having something high behind you locates this very nicely. And when you've got a glass of wine, oh this is going to get more interesting, interesting isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well done Johnny. <laughs> oh thank you. I think we're allowed to have a little yes, hug on camera. <laughs> I must admit, when I first came here, I really wondered how we were going to turn this into a good project. It was a cramped space, it was uh, north-facing, there was no real light. The clients had quite a, um, a, a messy kind of uh, approach to living. I couldn't see how we could make a really clear, good design. But their enthusiasm and their trust carried the day for me. So by making a very modest extension here, and we're not talking very much here, probably about 
a total of something like five or six feet, just adding on that small amount of extra length to the room allowed us to put the central island in. But most of all, it gave us access to the garden. And when we started planning the kitchen, we realised that the arc of the sun was in fact only ever going to, to reach just round the edge of these front windows. But by being able to see the sun, you still get a sense that you're participating in the rhythm of the day. We're a bit like butterflies, we get drawn to the sun. So to feel the presence of the sun is very welcome, as Simon was saying, particularly on a winter's day. So how has this changed um, their lives and how has it changed the house? Well, first of all, it is now probably the biggest room in the house. And in a lot of the suburban houses of the 30s and later on too, there's this horrible sense that houses are literally a series of containers, a series of heat boxes. And here we've managed to escape. In fact, from what I understand, he spends more time in this room, as a lot of people do with kitchens, but he spends more time in here now uh, than in any other room. If you're cooking, you come this way. When, if you're socialising, you come that way. And therefore, because it splits the traffic flow up, mm -hmm. it means you can have more people in here without getting in each other's yeah. way. A traditional kitchen, you couldn't do that. Do you remember you, you gave us quite a lot of um, uh, concern about that being too narrow to use? Is that, is that um, OK? Ah, Johnny, you were right. You don't need as much work surface as everybody thinks you need. No, I think that's very interesting. I'm really pleased to hear you say that. What's beautiful about that is you've got a real mess in there that can be hidden Absolutely. away. Fantastic. We pull it out yeah. and when it's not in use... Yeah. The other thing is that the aesthetic here is basically modern and although, some, I mean, although there's no obvious lines between what's modern and traditional, I'd say the sensibility in this space, especially with the glass addition and so on, is modern. And yet we've managed to incorporate quite a lot of traditional ideas, haven't we? I don't call this modern, I call it contemporary, and I think there is a major difference mm. that is timeless. So this is more to do with the expression of individuality rather than a, uh, a particular kind of style, is what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Tell me how this piece works, because this is, was in some ways quite controversial, wasn't it? It is very unusual. Firstly, for the fact that there are the two dishwashers, which are here. They're smaller than normal. What I think is interesting about this piece it is actually sort of mutton dressed as lamb, or it looks, it looks like a very conventional piece of furniture, which in some ways it is. It's rectangular, it's, you know, it's a reasonable height, but actually it's got several different features. First of all, the height of this surface. You cannot use this for preparing food on. So the only thing you can do is to use this as a temporary parking spot. Point number one, absolutely required. Point number two is that the two dishwashers, um, when, you, when you use them, I mean, you're, I don't, you're a bit shorter than that, but basically you don't have to touch, you don't have to bend at all to load it. Now, to me, that speeds up the process of loading dishwashers. Because this was a kind of funny piece, wasn't it? It was not exactly an afterthought, but it was... Um, I don't see it as that. I mean, you had a big I, impact on it, didn't you? I'd say this is the bit that we did most collaboratively, mm. Johnny. It surprises so many people. As yeah, because you, you sort of don't know it's a fridge, do you, really? You have oh, yeah. Freezer yeah, it's very practical. It's there. There's quite an interesting thing. I mean, I don't know whether you realise this, is that um, between your knee and your eyes, okay, those are the, that's the actual part of any kitchen which is the most functional because you haven't got to think about using it. So this actually has become this complete food centre. When and if we ever move, I wish we could take it with, but I probably can't. You need another kitchen next time you go somewhere. There'll be different problems to solve. Jeanette.